Holy shit. That was intense. What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf, and I just got back from reading Area 51. That was some hot shit, let me tell you. All the anime, anime titties. Oh, man. There was the Half-Life 3. There was uh, Minecraft 2. The Witcher 4 was there, even. All the, like, alien technology. But, damn, you, we will all see it. It's September the 20th. Don't forget. But uh, I just rated it for myself, just so, you know, you guys could get a feel of what it's like in Area 51, man. Okay, so, uh, with that out of the way, um, uh, what else? Oh, yes, uh, if you guys didn't notice, I have a new logo and banner on my channel, which was actually created by uh, my old friend from uh, school, uh, Emina Omerovich. Uh, she uh, finished uh, graphics design and visual arts, and uh, I decided, uh, you know what, it's time for me to change my logo and banner, and who better to employ than her? She's a very talented artist and uh, graphics designer in general. So if you guys have any project of your own and you want someone to complete it, uh, I would highly suggest her. So yeah, go ahead, check her out. Amino Medovich, I will have everything uh, in the description below if you want, if you're interested. Okay, so with that out of the way, we are going to react to Geography Now, Kazakhstan. Very nice. You know exactly who you think of when you think of Kazakhstan. No, not like Step Raiders or like uh, uh, Central Asian people. No, you think of, you know who you think of. I'm pretty sure Paul will mention them just like two seconds in the video. Watch this. Guys, no, I'm not going to do a Borat impression, okay? That movie didn't <laughs> yep, even have a single it. Kazakh person in it. They filmed the Kazakhstan part in a gypsy village in Romania, and Sasha Baron Cohen was speaking Hebrew half the time. It did, however, boost their tourism by like tenfold, so there's that. Did it literally, or was that it's time to a hyperbole? Geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. Today we cover our first Central Asian country. Uh... Well, I mean, doesn't Afghanistan kind of count? Yeah, didn't Afghanistan kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Kazakhstan is cool uh, because I think it's it like the country <laughs> that melts both Europe and East Asia together in a very unique way. You can even kind of tell just by looking at the people. It's like they look kind of Asian, but then you're not sure because some of them have like light Caucasian features. I know there's this one guy in Afghanistan that looks like Bruce Lee and he wanted to like become Bruce Lee and uh, do like Bruce Lee films. Uh, he kind of like looked like him uh, uh, when it comes to like body size and everything. Uh, I don't know what happened to him now. I, I seen it a while ago on, on like Vice News. I feel you, Kazakhstan. I've been getting that my whole life. And how did it all happen? Well, it's partially. Wait, what's his heritage? Let me see that. Oh, so he's okay. I knew the Korean part: Italian, Irish, and French. Well, from, my heritage is like Bosnian, more Bosnian, even more Bosnians, and a hell of a lot of Bosnians. That's basically my entire family. 100 percent it's just bosnians <laughs> getting that my whole life and how did it all happen well it's partially to do with the location that they live in which brings us to central asia now turkey may be the bridge between europe and asia if you consider the middle east asia but kazakhstan is like the bridge between europe and east asia first of all kazakhstan is located in central during asia, the silk road by yeah. other countries so close to mongolia but a 20 mile wide corridor separates them with a coast on the northeast sides of the caspian sea where their only seaport Aktau is located yeah, I just want to cry every time I look at the Aral Sea right here because due to a lot of uh, irrigation projects by the Soviet Union, uh, a lot of the water works that a lot of the waterways that were flowing into the air, feeding into the Aral Sea were diverted for uh, cotton production, and it has left this. And unfortunately, there was like a chemical plant in the middle of all this. So not only is it is the Aral Sea disappearing, but um, it is also very toxic now. And uh, unfortunately, it probably will never uh, heal again. So this is just going to be in one, the largest, the world's largest uh, salt pan or chemical salt pan, technically, because the Aral Sea was important back then, not only because of like uh, shipping and fishing, but also because uh, because uh, the Aral Sea would be evaporating and everything. There, there, the 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 land around it wouldn't be an entirely desert. It would be like a semi-arid zone. So, uh, it wasn't entirely a desert, but now, unfortunately, with the sea disappearing, uh, there's a whole lot of des desertification going on in the, uh, in this general region. Oh, by the way, there's this region I read in, the, in, an, in an atlas that, uh, says there's this, like, part of uh, Turkmenistan that's called Balkan. Like, the Balkan. B-A-L-K-A-N. Don't believe me? Look it up. 
located. It is the world's largest landlocked country, ninth largest in the world at nearly... Well, they're not completely landlocked. I'm, I'm talking a lot, aren't I? Because they actually do have some, like, uh, seaports that can go up through the... Get this. Up through the Volga River and then through the Volga Don Canal, they can pass into the Don River. And th through the Don River, they can go through Rostov uh, Nadonu, which is, uh, you know, which feeds into the Sea of Azov, which feeds into the uh, Black Sea, which... By going through the Black Sea, you can go to the Bosphorus, through the Bar Bosphorus, then through the Dardanelles, to the Asian Sea, then through the Mediterranean, and through the to the world, basically. So, not for me, that's technically not landlocked, but well, they're still kind of like they're still pretty landlocked, yeah. <laughs> and Uzbekistan is actually a double landlocked nation, but that's a different story. One million square kilometers. Like seriously, the country's distance is like the same from London to Istanbul. Speaking of which, the longest road that's in Europe, the huge. E40, extends over 5,300 miles all the way from Calais, France to Ritter, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Cute. The country is divided into 14 <laughs> regions. Trans-Siberian Railway. Capital Astana, located in the Akmola region. Nonetheless, Almaty in... It used to be Almaty. I, that's what I wanted to say. The south is actually the largest city, with Skimkent rounding out number three. And all three of these cities have the busiest airports in Kazakhstan. Now, Kazakhstan was part of the former USSR prior to independence, so you see kind of like leftover disputes when it comes to territorial anomalies. Basically, it kind of went like this. Hello, I'm Gorbachev, and all you republics are relinquished from the USSR, which is not the USSR anymore, but just plain Russia. Oh, and it's the year 1990. Okay, but we have like mix-up communities, so where do we draw the borders? You wanted this, you figure it out. <laughs> the Kyrgyz Kazakhstan episode is going to be so fun, I promise. In the Caspian Sea, Kazakhstan has a little dispute with Russia over the marshy Ukantni Island, as well as the Jeski and Malijem Chushni sandbanks, known for being located above an offshore oil producing zone. Then we have that little dispute with Uzbekistan over the Bozrozhdenia Island, which is now a peninsula due to the drying up of the Aral Sea. The only other I strange territorial time. anomaly would probably be the famous Baikonur Cosmodrome. This is the site where the first launch of the first satellite Sputnik and the first manned orbital cool. flight by Yuri Gagarin yeah, happened. Yeah, this place Kazakhstan. is leased to Russia until also, uh, I believe that's where the, Russia, the Russians uh, tested their first nuke in Kazakhstan. They tested a lot of nukes, I think, in Kazakhstan. 2050, and today you will need a Russian visa if you want to visit, unless you're lucky enough to score a guided tour. Yeah, in 1991, the Russians were like, All right, Kazakhstan, you are your own country now. No more USSR. You're free. Wow, I get my own space, the Caspian Sea, the mines, the mineral fields, the grassland. Oh, look, a space station. Ah, da, 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 da. That's still mine. That's still mine. Okay, fine. But remember, you do owe me from all that nuclear testing we're doing on the east ah, side. It now it's like the most radioactive thing on the planet. Semipalatinsk. Look it up. I mean, when they built it, they didn't realize Kazakhstan would eventually secede, so yeah. Nonetheless, there are over 27,000 yeah. ancient <laughs> monuments throughout Kazakhstan. Places of interest might include things like the Monument of Independence, the Pyramid of Peace and Harmony, the Isik Burial Mound with the Golden Man, the Soyuz 11 Memorial, Khan Shatter, the tallest tent in the world, Baiterek Tower, Whoa, Medu, the cool. world's highest skating rink, Ascension Cathedral, Aristan Bab Mausoleum, the National Museum of Kazakhstan, the Museum of Folk Music, Fountain Circus, Koktobe Hill Recreational Center with rides and attractions, and a Beatles Mausoleum. Monument, Nur Astana <laughs> Mosque, and the triumphal arch of Mangilic. This looks end, pretty nice. It's like worse than Chernobyl. Also, uh, Kazakhstan, for those who didn't know, is the wealthiest and most prosperous nation in Central Asia, mostly due to them having a lot of like rare resources and uh, uh, yeah, a large landmass, small population, tons of resources. It's kind of hard not to get rich. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard blow to their land, which is otherwise pretty majestic. Which brings us to. Kazakhstan's landscape is kind of like an alternate universe Twilight Zone version of Mongolia. It's like kind of similar, but there's something a little off. First of all, the country is generally flat with massive steps and things like the Caspian Depression, the Turgai Valley, and the Kazakh uplands, which compose the majority of the country's land makeup. In the east and southeast, you get the mountains along the Altai and Tian Shan ranges, the highest mountain being Khan Tengri, which again is like the Roraima of Central Asia as it acts as a tri-point border between them, China, and Kyrgyzstan. I don't know why China even bothered with it though. It's like, come Come on, you already have like half of Mount Everest. Why take parts of other countries' tallest peaks? I know, right? Otherwise, numerous rivers cross the country, the longest one being the Irtish River, which flows through the northeast, shared with Russia and China, dangerously close to the radioactive fallout from Semipalatinsk. However, the Ishim River is more important as it passes through the capital, Astana. Then you get the strange largest lake, Balkhash, because the western half of it is fresh water and the east is salt water. Strange, huh? And that's not even half of the strange. Then you have things like the Valley of Balls. <laughs> Valley. 
Valley. With strange miracle, <laughs> eroded boulders Funny valley, yeah. around three to four meters wide. You have this strange submerged forest, Tamgali Gorge, Chardon Canyon, and the most notable natural landmark, the Drying Aral Sea. It was made by diverting water in the former Soviet times, and now you can see a strange post-apocalyptic setting with rusting abandoned ships and sea vessels in a dry grassland as Bactrian camels graze quietly in the distance. By the way, if you're part of an alternative rock band, this is like the perfect place to make a location <laughs> shoot for an album cover. Anyway, Kazakhstan is loaded with natural resources. About 100 of the elements on the periodic table can be found mined yeah. in Kazakhstan. They take 12th place in oil reserves and they are in the top 20 of gas reserves, most of which center around the 970 square mile Tengiz oil field, which is one of the largest in the world, making it the country's largest export oil, which in return makes them the largest economy in Central Asia as they hold about 60% of the entire region's GDP. Wildlife is actually mm -hmm. quite prevalent. You have voles, gray herons, bats, pygmy cormorants, wolves, foxes, stoats, ah, marbled wolves. polecats, saiga antelopes, what the, the two fuck animals, was that? the snow leopard, and the golden... Sorry, well, what the frick? Where is it? Where, show it to me. Did an aardvark just, like, uh, have sex with a lynx? Or a deer? Whatever. That is... A, I got antelopes, I the two national animals, the snow leopard, and the golden stepped eagle. However, the horse is probably the most important animal. It's been said that the horse was probably first tamed and domesticated in Kazakhstan. Eh, debatable. The horse also plays into... Uh, it, it is assumed that actually, like, in the southern Russia, where the Indo-Europeans were from, uh, Indo-Europeans being the ones who actually, uh, proto-Indo-Europeans, I should say, being actually the ones who domesticated the, uh, horse, and that's how they spread their language all around, all the way from, like, India to, yeah, Europe. Food. There's a joke that Kazakhs are the second largest meat eaters in the world, the first being wolves. Ha! Challenge accepted. The national dish being beshbarmak, literally Not really translated yet. as Country. five fingers because you're supposed to eat it with your hands. It's noodles with horse meat on top. Yes, they eat horse. However, the rule is you do not eat the horse you ride. Stop copying me! It's also said that apples originated <laughs> in Kazakhstan. Well, the Gok Turks uh, actually occupied the entire area. We know it today as the Central Asian steppe all the way to Mongolia, so... Technically, they're kind of related, uh, you know, because it's kind of easy to conquer the area we know as Central Asia, being that it, it is steppe land, which is great for moving around. It's a nice, large, flat land. If you have a horse and you have, if you have good archers, freaking just take over all the steps. You, you can, you know, that was actually the fastest way you can travel uh, back in the day. That's why the Mongol Empire was so large, because they could, you know, Travel around easy with their horses and uh, nice flat land, whatever. Okay. The name of Not the city, <laughs> Almaty, actually translates to the place of many apples. You can even find many wild apples apple are from trees Kazakhstan. All across Kazakhstan. Otherwise, Kazakhstan does pretty well at staying afloat. I mean, they became the first former Soviet nation to receive a positive global investment ranking in 2002. They paid off all their debt to the IMF. Nonetheless, all that forward moving does come with a little bit of backstory and a tincture of controversy, which brings us to... Now, I personally love meeting ethnic Kazakh people because I feel like they could totally pass as my siblings that were separated from me at birth. It's weird. They've got just that beautiful mixture of Asian and Europe. First of all, the country has about 18.1 million That's what I'm trying to figure out. six people per square kilometer. The country is about 67% oh, ethnic That sounds like Kazakh, heaven to me. <laughs> whereas about 20% are Russians, and the rest are made up of other groups, mostly Turkic peoples like Uzbeks, Uyghurs, and other groups like Chechens, Ukrainians, Tartars, and Poles. They use the Kazakhstani tank. Polish people currency, everywhere. They use the type C plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now let's talk about the largest Good people group. What exactly is a Kazakh? Well, today that question is a lot harder to answer than what it may have been a thousand years ago. In the shortest way, Kazakhs are classified as a Turkic people group, not Turkish, Turkic, there's a difference, in which they share the same linguistic those structure Turkish as many people other countries are Turkic. and people groups across Asia and Europe. I found this video hosted by Isulu from the channel Gilo Team, which they do a great job explaining. Check it out. Awesome video, right? This creates a whole new unique kind <laughs> of populace sense. that looks like an entire nation of biracials, kind of like what happened with Brazil with the Pardo people. Nonetheless, most of Kazakhstan is kind of actually at a cultural crossroads. More people speak Russian than the actual native Kazakh language. Yep, I feel you. Nonetheless, the president, <laughs> Nursultan Nazarbayev, who has been their only president since independence and has a little bit of controversy, like when he held a snap election in 2015 after being accused of human rights violations, just he got announced 99 that in the next of the years, vote. Kazakhstan will be switching over from using <laughs> wink, the Cyrillic wink. alphabet to the Latin one, some saying this being a Good. subtle move to Kazakhify their country. 
Wait, what did you say about the president? Eh, just look it up. We don't have time. As a Turkic country, Kazakhs are related to and can kind of understand the speech of their other Turkic neighbors that extend as far as the frozen Arctic tundras of northeast Russia to the Black Sea with Turkey and the Gagauz people in that strange autonomous unit in Moldova. Moldova is gonna be a fun episode, trust me. It's like a place where people don't care if everything is burning to the ground. They just dance through it. Anyway, obviously we don't have time to get into the full history of Kazakhstan, but in the quickest way I can put it, Scythians, Turkic-speaking Mongol tribes arrive, Huns invade, Arabic Karakhanid Turks come in and introduce Islam, tribal powers fight for control, Kitians invade, Timur Ilang builds an empire, Kazakhs break away from the Uzbek Khanate, Zungar people invade, Russians come in and help, then the Russians kind of take <laughs> over and rule them, Khan Kene revolts against Russians unsuccessfully, sons of new Russians and Ukrainians flock in to work, Kazakhs resist military work. draft in World yeah. War One. they become an autonomous republic in the USSR, Russian influence for decades, independence in 1991, capital is moved, sons of new Kazakhs migrate back to Kazakhstan and ethnic Russians move out, making Kazakhs a majority in their own country again, Nazarbayev becomes their only president, a bunch of oil gas pipeline controversy, and here we are today. Now, when it comes to culture, Kazakhstan is quite unique. For one, Simple. the majority at around 64% identify at least nominally as Muslim. However, in 1990, President Nazarbayev actually created a separate mufiate for the Kazakh Muslims. He forbade religious political parties and removed Kazakhstan from the authority of the Muslim Board of Central Asia. This decreed Kazakhstan as a secular state, even though the government kind of puts strict control on all religious communities. This makes Kazakhstan the only Central Asian country whose constitution does not assign special status to Islam. Islam. And apart from certain areas with mosques, you wouldn't even really notice it too much, especially in the booming cities. This is because Kazakhstan's culture is way more Turkic and Mongol derived than stereotypical Middle East Arab Muslim derived. There are people of wanderers, nomads, some people even still live in yurts in the countryside. Oh jeez, really? Again? During celebrations, you can see people wearing traditional costumes, playing traditional step folk music. By the way, they celebrate three different New Year's, Gregorian, Nari's Spring Equinox, and the Julian calendar. They have so hey. many horse related festivals. More holidays. Games, like pick up the napkin and steal the woman on a horse and if you can't, she gets to beat you with a whip game. Aside from all that, Kazakhs are known <laughs> for excelling in sports like weightlifting, cycling, and ice hockey. Some notable people from Kazakhstan might include people like cyclist Alexandre Vinokurov, Sabina Altinbekova, Timur Bekmambetov, Gennady Golovkin, Denis Ten, Kunan Bayuli, Ken Alibek, Abilai Khan, Olja Sulemenov, Marat Jlambayev, and Shukrat Mitalipov. At least those are the people oh, no, who the Kazakh geography people mentioned to me. I literally have no idea who most of those people are. So basically, with Kazakhstan, you get this strange land of East Asian Europe European mixed kind of nominally Muslim people that speak Russian that love to ride and eat horses. Yeah, sounds like people I'd hang with. And let's find out who else thinks the same in. Also, their flag is like one of the coolest Kazakhstan in the world. Kazakhstan is like the kingpin big brother of Central Asia. If you want to talk to any of the other former Soviet republics, Uzbekistan will like to know your first. location. Now, they generally get along with other Turkic and Russian speaking countries. I say now, that because the Uzbeks historically have been the most assertive in Central Asia, but there's time for that later. However, Central Asia is kind of like the Balkans, which it's like a family with a bit of dysfunction. Turkmenistan, like I already mentioned, in Turkmenistan, there's a place called uh, the Balkans. Is like the angry brother that isolates himself, and Uzbekistan is like the angry brother that argues with all the other brothers. Kyrgyzstan is like the little brother that they love, but they keep asking them for money. Tajikistan is like the distant cousin that speaks a Persian-based language. Turkey, Mongolia, and South Korea are like far away distant close friends that share the same Turkic and Mongoloid history and culture. Yeah, that's right. I actually found out recently that the Koreans have a Mongolic uh, past, which I would have never guessed. I thought they were Sino-Tibetans like uh, other Chinese or something, but nope, I was wrong. So learn everything every day every as well day. they've established great trade deals tons of koreans seem to love moving to kazakhstan the u.s was the first place to recognize them as a state after independence and they've been jumping in on investments but when it comes to their best friends most kazakh people i've talked to have said russia although certain seasons of controversy have existed overall russia has not only been close in customs unions they and belarus share a free trade agreement but in almost every other level of diplomacy they get along well they both speak russian they both love russian food and tv shows and even though kazakhstan is trying to wean itself off the russian influence to research a more Kazakh identity, they can't help but cling on to certain aspects that were so deeply ingrained in their history from the Russians. In conclusion, Kazakhstan is a country that is full of East Asian mixed, horse-loving, Muslim-majority identifying, Russian-speaking, government controversifying, but moving forward with resource-extracting country. That was a fun episode. Kazakh can stand all the wonderful info we just learned. That was pretty can't good. I like you? that one. <laughs> That was so horrible. That was. I think that's the worst pun I've ever made in this entire series. <laughs> Stay tuned. I thought it was Kenny. very creative. Ah, Kenny. Next. There was actually a kid. A long story, but um, we're gonna get into Flag Friday here. There was a kid uh, I knew in Ilyash that lived in the town where I live. It was actually like from Kenya. We called him Kenny. I don't know what happened to him. I haven't seen him in a while now. Hopefully everything's okay. Kenny, hit me up. <laughs>
Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you liked the Kazakhstan episode. Okay, let's just jump into it. Yes, there are a few things that I got wrong in the episode. I accidentally Probably pronounced me too. it Skimkent, it's Shimkent. Speaking of Shimkent. which, this yeah. is not a picture of Shimkent Airport. It's an airport in Crimea. This is not a picture of anything in Shimkent. It's a picture of some kind of square in Hungary. I accidentally wrote Tartar instead of Tatar. Yeah, <laughs> Tartar defense, sauce. So many people get that wrong. And finally, this I is don't. not Olja Tatar. Sulmanov. I have no idea who this chick is. Ken was in charge of the images, so for the 87th time, Ken, you're fired. Yeah, but I kind of need you. Okay, you're rehired again. <laughs> All right, that being done and said, now we can talk about flag stuff, shall we? Without further ado... If anybody knows, um... Country right, balls. Kazakhstan. You know that Kazakhstan right is bat, always I knew a square. For sure that there are going to be two things in the comment section: obvious, copious amounts of Borat references and arguments about Nursultan Nazarbayev. So yeah. Anyway, the flag. The flag has a sky blue field with a gold that. sun containing 32 rays that is... above a golden step eagle. Hey, Kazakh people, the golds on the the sky blue is just. You got the flag right. That, that I will, I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> the left or hoy side shows the koshar muiz, a traditional Kazakh pattern inspired off of a ram's horns. According to my research, there's no specific significance behind the number 32. They just thought it kind of looked cool. What about 42? A significant color to the <laughs> huh? Star Trek of the country as it symbolizes ethnic unity, the endless sky, and water. The sun stands for a source of life and energy, as well as wealth and plentitude, which is why the rays are shaped like grain to signify abundance and prosperity. And finally, the eagle represents freedom freedom, power, and the flight to the future. The colors blue and gold like were it. inherited from the former Soviet flag that they were under during Soviet times, obviously, just minus the red. Prior to that, they were under two other former Soviet flags in early Soviet years. Prior to that, they were under the Alash autonomy flag, which was basically <laughs> the same thing as Turkey's flag. And prior to that, there was a bunch of separating in certain areas, but the most prevalent flag that they used was the Kazakh Khanet flag. The Kazakh Khanet was basically a successor to the Golden Horde, which was basically the northern sector of the Mongol Empire. Anyway, when the split up. arms which is not a coat of arms, it's an emblem. The emblem contains a pattern that depicts the shanirak, or the upper dome ceiling section of a yurt, the tent-like living unit that the nomadic peoples lived in. I like the emblem ago. as this well. This is meant to symbolize family, peace, and calmness. Flanked on each side are the tulpar, which are mythical winged horses, which represent bravery, and the circular pattern of the emblem signifies life and eternity. Finally, underneath everything on the golden banner in Cyrillic is written Kazakhstan. Simple. So that just about does it. Kazakhstan sure loves its gold, which, by the way, to some small extent, is also mined in Kazakhstan. All right, so you know what that means? Okay, end of the video, but Kazakhstan, when, when it comes to the flag and emblem, 10 out of 10 to all you Kazakhs out there. So anyway, yeah, thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.